Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Otkarsh Small Finance Bank Q1 FY25 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on a touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Dinesh Bhua from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Utkarsh Small Finance Bank Q1 FA25 earnings call. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to thank Utkarsh Management team for giving us the opportunity to host this call. Today, we have with us the entire top management team of Utkarsh SSB represented by Mr. Govind Singh, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Sabji Kumar, CFO, Mr. Alok Patak, Chief Risk Officer, Mr. Triloknath Shukla, Head Microbanking, Mr. Umesh Arora, Head Assets, Retail and Wholesale Lending, uh, Mr. Sanjay Sharda, Head Renewal Banking, Mr. Abhijit, uh, Chief Information Officer, and Mr. Puneet Maheshwari, Head Finance. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Govind for his opening remarks and then we'll open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Renish. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking out time to attend our quarter one FY25 earning call. Uh, in terms of performance for quarter one FY25, our draw zone book has grown by 31% YOI in line with our expectation of 30% annual growth. Deposits have grown by 30% YOI, largely in line with our plan. Our series has declined by around 1% from 93.7% as on March 24 to 92.7% as on June 24th, also in line with our strategy and plan. Quarter 1 is usually a seasonally uh, weak quarter for growth and uh, there are additional impacts this time on account of severe heat waves in our core geography as well as operational limitations on account of general elections in April, May 24. In this background, our quarter on quarter loan book growth and deposits growth at 3% and 4% respectively is reasonably well and we expect business growth to move up in coming quarters. In quarter one FY25, we have also seen impact of, uh, we have seen severe impact of severe heat and heat wave and of operational limitation on account of general elections on collection efficiency and asset quality. Microbanking lending is heavily dependent on physical connect with the borrowers. Despite an increasing trend in digital collection and to that, ex to that uh, collection efficiency and asset quality in microbanking was impacted during quarter one FY25. In our view, during times of operational challenges, we also see additional stress building in certain pockets uh, as our ability to connect more frequently with borrower over and above scheduled center meeting goes down. And as a result, we have seen additional stress in some pockets in Jharkhand, Odisha, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan, while stress in Haryana and nearby locations continues. Recently, MFIN has issued uh, you know, a guardrail guide, a recommendation for the sector to promote responsible lending, ensuring the long-term sustainability of the microfinance sector. In our view, MFIN's recommendation with respect to limit on indebtedness of the borrower and number of lenders for, for, for the borrower are structurally positive for the sector. We have already implemented these recommendations in our IT system. This would help in keeping overall leverage of the client under check, while these changes have, uh, may have transit, uh, transitory impact on business growth over next three to four months. As per our assessment, impact for us will not be much, would be in a single digit. At the same time, we will continue to expand our new customer acquisition and are confident that we'll be able to maintain around 2% loan book growth in microbanking in FY25. One more, one more point I want to highlight is that our average loan ticket size is one of the lowest among industry with average loan outstanding per borrower around 35,000. Our maximum out disbursement ticket size of, for JLG borrower is rupees 75,000 which is also one of the lowest. As mentioned in our last earning, earnings call, we have introduced differential rate of interest for our JLG customers from mid of May 2024 wherein we, ch we charge lower interest rate by 1 to 2 percent to our selective client space, uh, client basis, asset quality, vintage curve, etc. This will help us build more effective risk-based pricing. 
asset quality in mortgage and ccv uh, lending was also impacted in quarter 1 fy25 as we witnessed some delays in execution of orders with res with, ref with ref respect to reposition of properties and also credit behavior of some of these stress clients this has come back to normalcy and fresh slippages in msme and c and cv segment expected to reduce significantly as well as recoveries upgradation would pick up in quarter 1 fy25 overall our gross nps declined from 3.13% as on june 23 to 2.78% as on june 24 on gross advances including ibpc book our gross nps was 2.5% as on june 24 net nps declined from 0.33% as on june 24 to 0.26% as on june june 24 Uh, we continue to build floating provisions to ensure resiliency to our to strengthen our ability to withstand any unforeseen event uh, impact better we created additional floating provision of rupees 20 crore in quarter 1 fy25 and our total floating provision increased from rupees 149 crore as on march 24 to uh, rupees 169 crore as on june 24 our credit cost including floating provision was 2.7% and excluding floating provision was 2.2% in quarter 1 FY25 we will be strengthening our collections efforts further to keep credit costs at our guided range of around 2% we have deployed senior field staff and business support team to contain flow forwards we have seen steady growth across our secured retail loan portfolio in line with our plans we have also inched up disbursement yields in msme lending by around 670 basis points in quarter 1 fy25 and by 20 to 30 basis points in housing and ccv as well uh, we will continue to work towards building these secured businesses and optimizing lending yields further on the liability side our deposit growth is led by retail term deposits as we continue to focus on strengthening the deposits profile through broad basing of depositors our retail term deposits grew by 45 around 45% year on year while bulk deposit grew deposits grew by only 12% year on year on account of elevated interest rate environment and consequently depositor preference towards term deposits casa deposits growth remain relatively lower vis-a-vis uh, overall deposit growth as on june to 302024 we had surplus liquidity of more than 3000 crore which is much higher than usual requ usual liquidity requirement and to that extent it, it has impacted our nims as well we expect to consume part of the surplus liquidity over next two quarters as loan book growth picks up and to that extent it will support net interest margins our series ratio declined to 92.7% as on march as on june 30 2024 from 93.7% as on march 21 uh, 2024 and if we net off the refinance borrowing from advances cd ratio declines to 84.2% uh, we don't have any short term borrowings on our balance sheet we expect our cd ratio to decline further in fy25 we continue to build our banking franchise and open 28 new branches in F in quarter 1 fy25 taking total branch network to 916 branches as on june 24 we have completed appraisal cycle for all the employees in quarter 1 and rolled out salary increments effective from april 1 2024 uh, we had healthy financial performance our operating profit for the quarter was 311 crore highest ever quarterly operating profit for us our profit after tax increased by 28% year on year to rupees 137 crore in quarter 1 fy25 our roa and roe was 2.3% and 18.1 Uh, percent respectively during fy25 in line with our guidance for fy25 uh, the finance budget for fy25 aims inclusive growth with an emphasis on supporting msme and small businesses affordable housing agriculture and women empowerment and skill development we believe we believe that inclusive growth paves the way for sustainable growth and has also significant positive impact on rural and semi urban geographies we have deep presence across rural and semi urban locations with more than 50% of our branches in these locations we will continue to strengthen our presence there therein create stronger franchise for our micro micro banking business as well as for other retail by lending more more granular liabilities franchise and offer relevant products to uh, explore significant business potential of our core geography 
We are also undertaking a business te technology transformation project to make bank future growth ready, details of which we have covered on slide 40 and 41 of our investor presentation. We believe this will help in superior customer experience, significant process improvement and growth prospects. I uh, will request Abhijit Bhattachari, our Chief Information Officer, to briefly talk about this later during this call. Lastly, our guidance for FI25, loan book growth around 30% and increase in share of secured loans. Deposit growth to be higher than credit growth and reduction in CD ratio. Credit cost around 2%. Cost income ratio in the range of 54 to 57%. ROA uh, of more than 2% and ROE of, of more than 18% uh, for the financial year FI25. I will now hand over to Sarju for taking the, you through financial performance of, for the quarter. Thank you. Thank you, Govindji, and thank you, friends, for participating in this earnings call for Q1 FY25. Govindji has already mentioned about credit cost, which is higher in Q1 FY25. So, except for higher credit cost and maybe certain activities, the fructification of which we'll see incremental CASA growth in the coming quarters, overall the bank has witnessed healthy financial performance for Q1 FY25 and which is largely in line with our guidance. Let me give you some granular performance numbers. Our net interest income grew by 36% YOY and 6.2% sequentially quarter on quarter to 573 crores in Q1 FY25. The underlining being the gross loan portfolio which stood at 18,798 crores registering a growth of 30.6% YOY and sequentially a growth of 2.7% quarter on quarter. Our cost of funds largely remain flat at 8%, similar to, level Q, to, to the level of Q4 FY24. Uh, the bank gainfully deploys its PSLC book and uh, at a favorable borrowing rate if I were to Account for the lower borrowing through IBPC route, our cost of fund in fact is better by 10 basic points, which is at 7.9% for Q1 FY25. Also, the retail book, Anching Higher Yield, has also seen the stability in the need. Uh, on terms of deposit, deposit stood at 18,163 crores, registering a growth of 30% by OY, and sequentially 3.9% quarter on quarter. Uh, it's not only the, the deposit growth on a totality basis, we do focus on composition and our focus on RGD has seen a growth of retail term deposit by 48% by OY and the combination of RGD and CASA as a percentage of the total, total deposit is at 67% growing from 61% which was at immediately at the previous year and quarter. The bank's other income for the current quarter, Q1 FY25, is a tad lower than the immediate previous quarter, Q4 FY24. Primarily, three reasons attached to that. The Q4 FY24 generally has a larger disbursement. Also, the third party distribution is also higher in Q4, and we had a very good write off collection in Q4. Now, this is a natural phenomena where Q4 numbers for these three elements are generally larger in a financial year in Q4. However, our other income on a year on year basis increased by 14% to 105 crore in Q1 FY25 against 92 crore in the immediate previous year and quarter. Our pre provisioning operating profit increased to 41% by OY and 10.3% quarter on quarter to 311 crore in Q1 FY25. Our operating profit in Q1 FY25 at 311 crore was highest ever operating profit for the bank. Our operating expenses increased by 25.2% 20, YOY to 367 crore for Q1 FY25. This is primarily in line with our investment in the growth. We added about 65 banking outlets in the year from the previous quarter year end to the current quarter year end and added about 1400 crore and 1400 uh, employee headcount. Uh, this year we have already rolled out increment for, for salary uh, beginning 1st April 2024. Even the incremental salary cost, yet our cost to income ratio in Q1 FY25 uh, was at 54%, uh, much lower due to efficiencies against 57% in Q1 FY24. 
In line with our strategy, we continue to build floating provision. We have uh, put 20 crore uh, element of cost uh, provisioning against floating provision in the current quarter. We will continue to uh, use this as a straight line, building in 20 crore of floating provision for each of the quarters for the coming three quarters too. The total provision amount outstanding as on June 2024 is 169 crore. As I mentioned earlier, uh, while the credit cost has gone up in Q1 FI75, uh, the GNPA, when I compare YOY, the GNPA has come down to 2.78%, that is 3.13%, and the net net MPA has also come down from 0.33% to 0.26%. The net result, including, as I said, the credit cost, this quarter, yet our profit after tax has increased by 28% YOY, 237 crores in Q1 FY25 versus 107 crores in the immediate previous quarter of the previous year. Our return ratios, again, with all credit costs embedded in it, the return on assets at 2.3% and return on equity at 18.1% continues to be healthy, and the bank continues to invest in people, products, processes, and technology. On the balance sheet front, our balance sheet was at 24,891 crores, which was 19,400 crores in the immediate previous year quarter end. The balance sheet size growing by 28% YOY. On the capitalization front, we are having a CRAR of 23.18%. Uh, this is after accounting for the dividend that was declared by the bank and approved by the shareholders in the AGM in the immediate previous month in July just about a few days back. However, this CRAR of 23.18% does not include the profit for the current quarter because it's a limited review result. If I were to add this profit, our CRAR inches up by 100 basis point and it actually becomes 24.2%. Now, having an overall performance, looking at you know ability to use the surplus liquidity uh, towards the business one, most likely than not able to control the credit cost and our healthy KPIs, not only for the current quarter, but for quarter, you know, previous eight quarters, we believe that at this point in time, we are not deviating from the diet guidance that we have given. Having said so, before we take your questions, I will now invite Abhijit, our CIO, to speak about his thoughts on the business transformation project that he is running for the bank. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Govindji mentioned, we are undertaking a business trans uh, technology transformation project to make the bank future growth ready. Bank already has a robust technology setup for servicing its current customer base and acquiring new customers. Apart from the core and supporting application for retail and microfinance customers, we have a strong offering in digital acquisition of microfinance and as well as retail liability business. And very strong servicing infrastructure via internet and mobile banking. We have also received ISO 27001 certification for IT and IT security operation. Uh, in order for the business technology transformation, we have adopted a holistic transformation approach some time back to make the bank ready for the growth and move to the next level. For the same, we have reviewed the entire uh, architecture and finalized the strategy of either a new or upgrade or replace of all critical elements of technology uh, and uh, digital and data infrastructure. The focus of the entire program is to support business expansion, new product launches, improve internal digitization and efficiency, strengthening core technology infrastructure, open banking technologies for digital-led partnership, deepen customer and partner self-service offerings, data as a key pillar on every process and system, and adoption of new technology uh, coming up uh, like AI. Given the large scope of the plan, implementation is spreading across multiple years and impact will be visible in a gradual manner. Request you to refer the slide number uh, 39, 40, and 49. Would be happy to take any questions on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
first question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, congrats on good number. Uh, firstly, if you can comment on how the micro banking collection efficiency is moving in July, has moved in July, and uh, would slippages be similarly higher in Q2? Because when I look at the OD buckets, OD buckets are, uh, you know, significantly, uh, you know, uh, swollen. And uh, uh, I understand that you are putting uh, a lot of efforts to collect from them. Uh, but still, I believe that there will be a certain amount of flow, forward flow coming into into NPS. So the question is on collection efficiency in July and uh, whether, uh, you know, slippages will be uh, as high as Q1 in Q2. And if that is the case, uh, how would our collect uh, credit cost guidance of 2% including the floating provision hold? Uh, because uh, in that case, then uh, the ask rate for the second half will be very high. Yeah, the, thank you, I mean, for attending and, and for this question. So uh, uh, the way you mentioned, yes, I mean, uh, July has, uh, you know, uh, we have not seen the uh, reversal or trend to that extent so far in July also. And but we have started our efforts, and uh, you know the the challenges which we had seen in the in the quarter one, like uh, especially in the wheat wave, and uh, because of the the dis uh, some disruption because of the elections, that is far you know behind us. One very important thing you know which I want to make very clear that you know when we are going to field and talking to customers or looking at the uh, rural and semi-urban economy per se, we are not seeing any stress in additional financial stress on the customers part. It is more of you know improving the improving the uh, the efficiency of our operations and uh, reaching out to all the customers. The customer intent and as well as their ability to payment is 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 not an issue. I think it is it is more to do you know uh, ensuring that the way we used to do earlier, uh, the same way we are able to meet all the customers and uh, you know improve our collections collection efficiency. So certainly, I mean, quarter two, uh, the the change may uh, or the improvement may be very marginal. But what we do expect it has happened fast also. Quarter three and quarter four are normally uh, very good, uh, you know, periods for microfinance in general and uh, in, uh, in uh, other verticals also. So our expectation is that you know uh, it may not significantly improve in uh, in quarter two. It will it will be uh, maybe in the same range or somewhere in that range. But quarter three and quarter four, we expect a significant improvement in in overall JLG and microfinance collections. So uh, that's why we are telling that you know uh, overall collection efficiency, uh, sorry, overall credit cost in the range of two percent, we are very confident of uh, as of now for the whole, for the year as a whole. Hmm. But slippages in Q2, you should be able to hold uh, at similar level of Q1, because generally, if I go by your own, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, trend of how much of SMA one and two. Uh, flows into slippages or become slippages in the subsequent quarter that is generally 45-50% of the bucket and uh, if I were to do the same match then the slippages can be around 200 or crore. No, I think uh, yeah I mean in, in terms of overall slippages you are, you are absolutely right but as I mentioned you know with additional efforts in uh, in the ground in fact our senior teams are just operating from some of the branches so that they are able to uh, guide the people, uh, guide our uh, team, and guide uh, and see the ground operations better. So uh, we do expect that the, the type of slippages we have seen during last three four months, uh, the uh, the same type of slippages we will not see uh, from here onwards. The only point I want to mention once again that the the improvement or the overall improvement takes little time uh, that we have seen in past also. So that's why the the actual impact will start seen from the quarter three and quarter four, you know, mostly in, in, in that range. Mm, okay. And just one last question is on growth. Uh, sir, if you can break up the growth of 30% uh, that you are guiding into MFI and non-MFI products. Uh, and uh, within MFI, uh, you know, uh, what kind of growth in customer acquisition we are looking because you spoke about MFI guardrails being implemented by the industry and that will transiently hurt growth. Uh, but you said that you will make it up because you'll be able to acquire, I mean, you will try and acquire more customers to mitigate that impact. So the question is, if the guardrails are being applied by the entire industry, uh, then do you think that we, are, we, can, we, we would be able to uh, mitigate the impact by acquiring more customers? Because a lot of customers may not fit uh, into the new guardrail, and especially in UP and Bihar, which are you know, slightly more competitive markets. Yeah. So uh, broadly speaking, uh, you know, when I say 30% increase, uh, you know, in our uh, AUM, 
uh, around 20% will come from micro banking that we had guided earlier also and we had last year we had grown around 22% so we are expecting around 20% odd growth in the micro banking and around 50% growth in the non micro non micro banking business especially the msme and affordable housing space and also we are seeing good traction in some of the you know uh, like uh, this business banking group so we do expect that we will be able to grow by 50% the re main reason is that the base uh, the current base is very small for these uh, businesses so we will be able to grow by 50% in these businesses within micro banking we expect that jlg will grow around say 15% or so uh, there will be higher growth from from the individual lending which we are which is a part of micro banking overall vertical when we say micro banking business loans uh, which almost doubled last year we expect a uh, uh, significantly higher growth rate from the um, uh, micro banking business loans so overall 20 odd percent from the uh, from the micro banking uh, businesses and third and 50 percent on non micro banking so that is the overall math and as far as you know growth for this year is concerned uh, i mentioned that you know our uh, uh, ticket size as per the for the disbursement our ticket size overall outstanding is is generally lower than the industry and uh, we are we are largely in the interior of when we say up and bihar also we are in the more in the interior rather than in large cities so we do expect that you know uh, getting new customers or disbursement to existing customers will not be a problem to have a growth of around 15 percent with jlg uh, see if you look at the industry people are talking of much higher growth rate you know in uh, in past also and for this year also but we are talking of very moderate growth rate which we are confident of achieving and we have a large uh, even from the customer existing customer angle also we have a large customer base you know more than 3 million customer base is there with us in jlg so even through subsequent cycle loans i think we should be able to you know get a uh, you know get this 15 percent plus jlg and overall 20 percent micro banking uh, we don't foresee any challenge in that uh, even if you look from the if you compare from the last year also our growth of micro finance you know in quarter one has been uh, better and it, it may not be you know around in, in the range what we would have expected but it's certainly better than what we had done last year and in spite of all that last year we grew around 22 percent so 20 percent growth for microfinance should not be a problem for us got it sir thank you and best of luck thank you thanks a lot thank you next question is from the line of rahil cha from crown capital please go ahead Hello. Good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yes, so just uh, so you mentioned about the you know stress in some pockets in uh, Jharkhand, Odisha, UP, and RJ, and even couple more. So if you can just you know give a few more points and elaborate uh, what is causing the stress, uh, how are you uh, planning to you know uh, tackle it, and so what's the situation now? Yeah, so uh, we have some uh, stress in Jharkhand, uh, Odisha, uh, Rajasthan, uh, and few parts of uh, UP and Bihar. Uh, so main uh, reason behind that, as it is already said, that uh, uh, the main reason was very uh, severe heat that this year uh, in uh, Q1, and then uh, uh, few issues were followed by this uh, this flood was there. Uh, that was another uh, issue. Uh, but uh, uh, these are the uh, temporary issues and uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, there are some issues of migration also in Jharkhand and Odisha. Uh, so when heat wave is there they migrate to other places and when uh, there is monsoon uh, when they start they come back to their uh, home location and they start cultivation all these things and they start paying also. So we had this experience in last year, uh, in previous years also. Uh, so uh, that is not uh, like something uh, permanent phenomena, and that is temporary, and we will uh, uh, we will uh, recover out of it, of course. Uh, as far as the UP is concerned, so there are uh, some pockets uh, like uh, uh, in uh, Devaria and Gorakhpur areas where uh, uh, this uh, uh, Karja Mukti Abhiyan is still there. So uh, they are uh, creating few problems in. Uh, uh, in uh, uh, districts like Maharajgan, Kushi Nagar, Devaria, and Gorakhpur, uh, uh, but but they are also again not uh, 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 spread in all over the area. So they are uh, 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 in few pockets only. They are in few villages only, uh, and uh, we are taking appropriate action also through our uh, uh, this SROs and uh, industry bodies. Uh, so we will overcome that also. Uh, uh, in Bihar, there was some temporary issue of flood uh, in uh, North Bihar, uh, so few of our branches were impacted by that. 
but uh, again, uh, we are uh, recovering on those uh, branches also uh, because now uh, flood has gone in those areas. So if there is uh, uh, no flood, uh, means there is no further flood in uh, Bihar, and uh, there is a, and in Rajasthan also again there are some issue of uh, migration. So they are again coming back to their location. Uh, so we we don't see any challenge to recover this uh, uh, this temporary phenomena. So I think uh, this uh, Q2 will be able to recover uh, uh, from whatever we have uh, uh, means uh, like uh, we have some M SMA1, SMA2 uh, increased in uh, uh, Q1. Uh, but but those are uh, means uh, very new uh, ODs. So we will be able to recover those fast. In fact, in, in uh, previous year also we have uh, such kind of challenges and we have recovered out of those very fast. Okay. Um, and secondly, um, if you could also uh, provide a certain guidance and means, how will they shape up for the rest of the year and branch additions? Nim? Yeah. So, uh, the NIMS as we speak, uh, you know, we may be, uh, uh, you know, we were at 9.9 .9 in the immediate previous quarter. We are at 9.4. In uh, Q1 FY25, uh, partially, you know, we have had a large uh, surplus liquidity. Probably uh, on our the envelope uh, computation, maybe that's uh, you know uh, eating the mean by say 20 basis points. And you know, certainly uh, NPAs you stop accruing interest, so that also results into you know interest being lower. But as we are able to deploy our surplus uh, liquidity funds in businesses in the in the coming months and quarters, and uh, as we just mentioned, that uh, credit cost uh, apparently being a temporary phenomena and most likely they not recover. We presume that uh, we continue to uh, have the uh, mean. Uh, of course, we have mentioned uh, it's going to be upward uh, nine percent, uh, but I think we will be in that trajectory certainly at the uh, nine point four uh, uh, as we go along. The second question is branches as well. Okay. So, so we uh, have plans of opening 160 or general banking branches, which are library led branches, and more than 100 micro banking branches. And micro banking branches, almost three fourths of the branches are split branches. Uh, as, as, as we mentioned, that you know, when the branch becomes large, uh, it is sometimes it becomes difficult to operationally manage those branches. So, wherever we have large branches, we try to uh, split those branches. Uh, two, two, two into two or one into two. So that is what uh, does happen. So we'll end up for having at least 150 plus branches during this financial year. In fact, the number may be a little higher than this, especially from split angle because operational is very, very important to you know, make the branches. Uh, I'll use the word operational light. In fact, that's very important so that we don't have large number of customers to be serviced from one branch. So at least 160 or branches and can, the number can go a little higher also. So given that, you still uh, will be able to accomplish your cost to income guidance? Yeah, certainly, all, certainly yes. In fact, that has been already factored in, in our uh, entire projection, uh, these 160 plus branches, uh, it's already factored in. So what Sarju mentioned that for this, I mean, overall 9% plus in a medium term, what we had mentioned in past also, and in the range of 9.4% for this financial year uh, is on the card. There is no issue on that part at all. Okay, thank you for now and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shailesh Kanani from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sorry, sir, to harp on this asset quality issue. Uh, when we are not seeing any meaningful recovery in terms of asset quality improvement in the month of July, and we are guiding that second quarter would be kind of uh, same like first quarter in terms of performance. And third quarter is where the festive season holidays would start, where we have seen uh, some dip in collection efficiency last year as well. So what gives us confidence to say that uh, we would be maintaining our uh, credit, co uh, credit cost guidance? Can you just uh, give some color on that? Yeah. So two aspects, in fact, one, uh, you know, besides JLG, I also want to speak about the non-JLG part where I mentioned that, you know, because uh, the business are a little different, so in case of non-JLG, uh, we saw that there was elevated credit cost in the, in the quarter one, 
and in fact uh, july has been you know a much better month from that perspective because we were able to get some of the orders from some of the courts and you know getting uh, uh, getting uh, recoveries from the mortgage and wheels business was much easier or much better in case of uh, july itself so one will see a significant uh, improvement in the uh, non jld part as per the overall credit cost or overall uh, telegreens are concerned second on the jld also as i mentioned you know uh, we have started the program you know in terms of where we have deployed people across in fact and there is a big focus on the uh, the uh, delivery customers on the dp i mean in the np customer even on the right of wherever we had right of in past and we should see you know uh, the, the traction because uh, we are currently focusing on a few branches which are, which actually cause this type of uh, lower collection efficiency and uh, the efforts this time are little different than what we have done in past and we do expect that they will start giving you know yielding results from quarter to i'm not saying quarter to will not happen but it may not be significant you know you know improvement or significant you know jump from quarter 1 in quarter 2 itself it may take some time and we should start seeing better results from the quarter 3 uh, onwards that is what we are you know expecting and that is what we are uh, we are uh, right now working in the field so still we are very confident that overall we should be in the range of 2% or so in terms of overall credit cost okay fair enough uh, sir one more question with respect to opex uh, i think we have done good amount of addition in the first quarter in terms of employees and uh, also in the opening remarks you had uh, indicated about the performance bonus or incentives or increment given uh, but how is that not visible in the opex front we have been able to do with well with respect to cti uh, can you throw some light on that so sir shall you are think that the quarter quarter of six are lower and why they are lower that's what you are saying yeah means uh, considering that we have added employees and you also mentioned in the opening you remarks about increment one year so you are right but q4 generally you know what happens the financial year 23 24 bonus you clarity appears after the december results and when you are in march you exactly know and therefore generally q4 has a uh provisioning of bonus aligned to the proper performance of the whole year which obviously is little uh, you know in 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 q1 uh, uh, as we say is the growth uh, goes along uh, differential uh, lower uh, and also the fact that uh, disbursement are the expenses that directly related to disbursement you know and if disbursements are higher in q4 and a bit lower in 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 q1 this does uh, uh, have a uh, impact of lower uh, initial quarter having a lower cost and also the efficiency part i think you know each time each quarter the efficiencies will lead to better savings so q1 actually has been a, a, a 54% cost to income ratios compared to uh, you know the immediate uh, previous quarter or or the quarter immediately previous year okay uh, so just last question from my side any update on the reverse merger yeah yeah so um, uh, i think by all uh, you know uh, appropriateness uh, you know uh, for the valuation set ratio june result is what we are going to to use uh, what we are going to look at is in this quarter uh, is to, to to go to the respective boards for approval of the scheme and we are also looking at filing the applications to stock exchange which goes to sebi and rbi as well we are going to see this activity is being completed in this quarter uh, so just to clarify we have already got the formal approval last time around in last quarter right with respect to uh it was for from the boards yeah, yeah. so it was pending in principle approval to go ahead with a scheme as an option uh okay. for the reverse merger uh now all the formalities which is to actually get the scheme approved uh, which is the conclusion of the entire scheme in the uh, realm of the regulatory requirement will happen in this quarter okay and the and the uh, reporting date or uh, the financials will be of the first quarter right that is what you're saying right Yes, for the valuation, for the flat purpose, it will be June quarters for both the entities, the bank and the holding company. Okay, uh, that's helpful. Thanks a lot, sir, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Gaurav Kuchar from Mirai Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, sir, just three questions. Firstly, if I look at the disbursement yield, uh, the disbursement yield seems to have improved across products uh, in this quarter versus last quarter. So, uh, just wanted to understand at a portfolio level, how big is the disbursement yield versus the portfolio yield? Uh, how big is the difference? Disbursement yield. So, sort of, uh, that is what uh, we have been highlighting uh, you know, in our earlier uh, discussions as well that uh, we are uh, basically working on improving yield optimization of yield in all uh, the non-micro banking verticals. So, in MSME vertical, we have seen yield improving by about 70 basis points and in housing loan and lease business, we have seen yield improving by about 20 to 30 basis points in quarter one. We think that this trend will continue and we will look for further optimization in all the asset classes uh, going forward as well. In terms of uh, disbursement versus portfolio yield, I mean, if you look at micro banking, it's largely uh, aligned now. I mean, uh, because as last time also we had highlighted that we were uh, planning to do a differential rate of interest for micro banking, which again we have implemented from mid of May. So we are lending at a lower interest rate by 1 to 2 percent uh, depending on the vintage of the customer and uh, the location of the customer and so on. So that has uh, reduced uh, disbursement even by 10-15 basis points but at the same time whatever repricing was still left that has given us uh, the same amount of benefit. In uh, retail lending as disbursement will move further over next 3-4 quarters we would see further improvement in portfolio rate. Got it. Got it. So, uh, let's say going forward, a uh, couple of things. One, the disbursement yield and the portfolio yield catches up in other products. Uh, and also the 20 basis point, I think what Sarju sir mentioned about uh, the liquidity track today, that would also get normalized in the next two quarters as the de liquidity is deployed into more loans. So, uh, in that in that case, today your uh, the current name of 9.4, uh, do you expect that to improve in the next two quarters? Uh, Maybe towards 9.5, 9.6, given the uh, the catch up of the portfolio yield and and the liquidity easing. No, we are uh, not expecting, let's say, a significant improvement from here because let's say we will get these uh, two benefits. But at the same time, as we have been say, saying that we would be increasing share of secured loans, and every one percent okay. increase in secured loan also kind of dip, uh, names by about 10 basis points. So while the one side there would be improvement on name on account uh, utilization of liquidity as well as higher disbursement yield, uh, we would also be increasing the secured lender. But more or less we would be maintaining name where we are, yeah. And there should be a little bit of additional benefit, I mean as the improvement asset quality. Sure, got it, got it, that's helpful. Uh, second question is on slippages, uh, 180 crore, can you give breakup of MFI, non-MFI and within MFI maybe JLG, uh, what would be the uh, component of this? Yeah, so uh, roughly, I mean, out of this 185 crore, about 125 crore is uh, the micro banking and balance is non micro banking. And within micro banking, it's largely uh, JLG actually. Uh, so, individual loan, as we have been highlighting, this is to the better profile customer. Uh, so, collection efficiency as well as the quality has been better there. Got it, got it. And of the balance today, let's say out of the 180, if you say 125, then remaining is 50, 55 crore is the non-MFI piece. Uh, do you expect at least this to normalize uh, and maybe uh, if we are, because we are more, mostly into secured uh, other than MFI, do you believe we can normalize this or recover this in the in the coming quarters? And this may have essentially been due to uh, due to the heat wave issue. Is it a anomaly, just uh, just to extrapolate, let's say the mix of 180, uh, roughly two-third is micro-banking, one-third is non-micro-banking. Has the mix been similar in the previous quarter or this quarter there is an anomaly? No, so as, as Kovinder highlighted earlier, this one-third portion which is non-micro-banking, we will certainly see improvement in quarter two. Right? Okay. I mean both sides. One is uh, the flippages should be lower as well as recovery upgradation on this fee should be higher. On micro banking, uh, it may remain uh, in the same range. So, that's how we are. Sure, but is this an anomaly or historically, let's say in 4Q or uh, uh, 3Q last year, uh, were the mix of the slippages similar or the slippages were more, uh, uh, more towards MFI, uh, which is not the case in this quarter? So, I mean mostly uh, the share of uh, MFI has been higher. Uh, I mean again, uh, because of the fact that this is unsecured asset class and uh, girls are secured asset classes, so mostly uh, the share of microfinance has been higher.
हेलो हेलो दिस क्लियर द्वारा मिस्टर गौरव डज दैट आंसर योर क्वेश्चन देर इज नो रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम मिस्टर गौरव सो विल मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ शिवानी अग्रवाल फ्रॉम ए नाइंटी वन पार्टनर्स एल एल पी प्लीज गो अहेड um hi hi thank you for your time um i just wanted to ask if you track or would be able to share borrowers which are say unique to utkarsh versus a borrowers who would be lending uh, say with other ssb or other or lending institutions as well yeah we track this number so our unique borrower has been in a range of about 30 percent okay and and would you have a sense of whether uh that's the case for say uh, and the other sort of like the 70% would be borrowing from other nbfcs and would this person be higher or lower for say the mfi versus the other asset classes uh you think mfi versus other asset classes i i didn't get this point no other uh, mfi uh, Uh, so 30 percent borrowers uh, are unique to Utkarsh, right? I'm saying in NFI, MFI, this would this number would be higher or lower? So 70 percent, rest of 70 percent will be borrowing from uh, uh, NBFC MFIs and SSBs. Basically, a few banks are also there, like uh, Axis Bank, Bandhan Bank, all these few few universal banks are also there now in our in our area. But for us, it has been around this range, like 30 to 35 percent range. In one or two quarters, we have seen a little bit of a dip, and one or two quarters, we have seen a little bit of an increase as well. Understood. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ashleesh Sonje from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi team. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, just a couple of. Firstly, on the Enfin guardrail. Uh, would you have a sense of where the other lenders are in implementing these guardrails and is there any way for the industry to ensure that you know everyone follows through eventually okay so i don't have any exact data you know whether people have already implemented but my sense is people are in the process of implementing and the way we speak with the mfin also and they are very strict and because they are sro also technically speaking they are sro so they can get in get in implement influence it may be a matter of one or two months in fact when people will start uh, implementing this but as of now i don't have any exact data who have already started who have not done so far but uh, my sense is pro- process on at least uh, among the major mfis and major slps you know who are into microfinance space it is on i mean there might be different stages so we have implemented it uh, as a first of others and uh, most of the sbs and uh, nbfc sbis who are uh, uh, means uh, uh, mainly all computer in our area uh, they they have either implemented or they will be implemented in next uh, ne- next one or two months got it sir friend uh, how would you w- try to resolve those borrowers who are ineligible for a repeat loan because of this uh, because of a breach of these guardrails so normally typically what happens you know uh, uh, now policy has come today so when they come for a next uh, loan with any of the mfis or sfb or or banks or even if it is section 8 company also i think they will not give him this second him her uh, next loan in fact that is typically happen so people don't people people don't recall these loans otherwise this have a different challenge but what happens this gets you know uh, regularized or this becomes uh, you know you can say uh, everyone starts following this up in next 6 to 9 months time i'm talking the existing customers wherever they have taken more loans than say three or four loans or they are not meeting or they are above 2 lakh rupees zone whenever next loan uh, comes for renewal with any of the um, microfinance part uh, uh, practitioner uh, it gets regularized at that time because they were they won't get the next loan now got it sir sir and secondly um in terms of have, have you seen any improvement in your zero bucket delinquency in any of your geographies you can leave out bihar because there was a flood issue over there in july but let's say after the heat wave has ended uh, have you seen any improvement in the zero bucket delinquency as in loans which were not delinquent earlier what is the collection efficiency in, in those set of loans has that improved so it is almost static right now i think we have not seen uh, you know uh, that type of improvement so far it's almost static but uh, normally what happens you know whenever there is a reversal of trend it takes little longer time 
because uh, you know efforts are more and there are some people who the number also goes up so it takes a little longer time but uh, as i mentioned and as thrilok also mentioned i think we should see uh, this reversal in this quarter and improvement from next quarter that is what we expect what is perfect thanks a lot those are all the questions right yeah thank you thank you next question is from the line of pranav gupta from ins alpha investment advisors please go ahead yeah my questions have been answered thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question you may press star and 1 next question is from the line of anirudh gangar from avendas wealth management please go ahead Uh, thank you and good evening for the opportunity uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, two questions one you mentioned sir the dm fin guardrail will impact growth by about 1% one percentage point uh, did i get that right uh, and the second thing was that in your guidance earlier you had mentioned an nnpa of zero uh, negligible or nil uh, is that also still intact those are my two questions yeah so you know on the first point uh, i mentioned this single digit i think i might have may, may not have Uh, mentioned clearly but our mention was that the changes what rp has our uh, mfin has guided or from mfin has recommended is it can lead into a decline in disbursement in the short term by say around single digit so i mean uh, not not 1% type of thing but single digit uh, it may not be much from you know from that perspective it won't have much impact on overall portfolio growth and uh, and 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 the yields part uh, but yes it can go you know within single digit it will contain the other portion was about the in mm, npa net npa in net net npa yeah we had guided that it will be closer to zero i think our uh, endeavor is still to do that part as i mentioned it has gone up we have seen that because of uh, little higher slippages in quarter 1 and currently we are we are focusing that uh, facing that but uh, i think our endeavor and we still think that we should be closer to zero when we close this financial year of F- fy25 so our guidance remains in the same range right now right and so just to clarify when you said disbursements may be impacted by single digit this is uh, being captured in your uh, guidance for loan book growth of 30% uh, already oh yes certainly yes as i mentioned last year also we had grown by 22% and our uh, quarter one growth for this year has been better than for last year for sure so again 22% we are saying we'll grow by 20 20% uh, around 20% this year and the jl and this largely applies to jl jo and jlg growth we are also talking about 15 or percent for this financial year so these have been factored in when we are talking of you know uh, the 15 20 percent growth rate uh, post mfin guidelines also right thank you very much thank you thank you participants to ask a question you may press star and 1 as there are no further questions from the participants i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments so thank you very much for attending this call and uh, you know we appreciate your you know interest and you are asking questions you are keenly watching the the performance of the company and uh, you know and the way we have guided also will will ensure that our guidance are are maintained throughout this Uh, uh we have seen good ground operations and we have seen a good growth overall yes in some of the some of the uh, pointers you know we need to work little more and we are we are you know we have a we are very clearly we have a very clearly understood that it it needs to be done so once again thank you very much uh, on behalf of entire uh, management for joining this call and uh, we'll stay in touch thank you thank you on behalf of icij securities that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your line